In this tutorial, you will learn how to debounce a push button with Arduino. I am first going to explain to you exactly what is this bounce problem and then how to fix it. So starting from this code that I'm gonna show you just a bit later, we are going to add a debounce mechanism to the code so that any physical bounce of the push button will not disturb the result of our application. And let's get started. And very quickly, here is the setup I have. So first, I have disconnected the Arduino to create a circuit. Okay, so I have first the ground of the Arduino connected to this line. Okay, I have the push button here in the middle and then a 10 kilo ohm resistor between uh, the left side of the button here and the ground. Okay, this will act as a pull down resistor. Then I have a uh, wire, a right wire between the right side of the push button and five volt of the Arduino. And finally, a wire between digital pin number three here and the left side of the push button. So the same side as the pull down resistor. Okay, and that's the circuit I'm gonna use for this experimentation. Okay, and this is the code we're gonna use with the bounce problem here. So let's first understand when does the bounce happen? Okay, the bounce will happen when you try to detect a change of state. So here we try to detect when the button has been released. And to do that, first we initialize the push button in the setup with pin mode and input. And then we are gonna read the button state in the loop. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the current button state with the last button state. The last button state was previously initialized here in the setup. And then anytime we detect that uh, the current one and the last one are different, we are gonna also update the last one for the next loop. Okay, so when we reach this line, we know that the state has changed, which means it's either going from low to high or high to low. Then we can check again. If it is low, it means that, well, the button has been released. If it is high, the button has been pressed. And so we just print the result here. So now what's happening is that if you run this code, uh, maybe when you're gonna press once, you're gonna see the result twice or three times or four times or, well, it can vary. Sometimes it's gonna be once, twice, etc. And this is not what you want because here you have just released the button one time, not twice, but you still have twice the result. So why is that? Well, here is the bounce problem explained. So let's say that the signal is low first by default and then you press on the push button. The signal is gonna go from low to high, all right? And then let's say you release, the signal is gonna go from high to low. This is the normal behavior you can expect. But now, so let's say you press again, and then you release again, and oh, what's happening here? Well, you can see that, for example, in this case, we have a physical bounce, okay? The button is gonna bounce a bit before stabilizing. And then what's gonna happen is that in the code, you're gonna read low, high, low, high, low, high, and then eventually low. But you're gonna have all those changes of state that are gonna be taken into account in uh, the code. And so this is the bounce problem. And this is why, for example, if you release the button once, you're gonna get two or three or four change of state because of this bounce issue. So what is the solution to that? Well, the solution is simply that when we detect a change of state here, here, here or here, we are gonna simply ignore the following change of states for the next X amount of time. So for example, here we could use 50 milliseconds. Okay, let's say that this is 50 milliseconds. So in this case, we have no problem, no problem, no problem. And in this case, well, let's say we have detected that the button has been released. In this case, we're gonna ignore the next few milliseconds and then we're gonna arrive here so that all the bounces that may happen or not are gonna be ignored in the code, okay? So that is the solution to the bounce problem. Now let's implement it. So back to the code, now we are very clear on what we need to do. We need to ignore, so when we have detected this, we need to ignore the following changes for the next X amount of time, and we're gonna choose 50 milliseconds as a good standard value. And so what do we need to do? Well, we need to keep first track of the time. Okay, so we need to know when this happens. So when this happens, we're gonna update a variable to keep track of the time. And then when we come back to the loop here, to be able to read the push button state, 
we're gonna add another if condition to check if enough time has passed since the last time the button state has changed. So let's add a few variables here. I'm gonna add unsigned long last time button state change. Okay, it's very clear with the name. Let's initialize it to millis or zero. That's the same thing at the beginning of the program. And then when we detect a change of state, whether it's pressed or released, we do last. So let's just put this variable here. Last time button state change is equal to millis again, but this time millis is the current time. So that's, that's gonna be uh, incrementing every time, okay? So now we have the last time the button state has changed and what do we do with this? Well, we're gonna say here, to be able to read the button state again, we're gonna do if millis, so millis is the current time, minus last time button state changed. This will give us the duration between right now and the last time the button state has changed, all right? If this is greater than the debounce duration, so I'm gonna add here unsigned long, let's say debounce duration is equal to 50, and we're gonna talk in milliseconds, okay? Because we compare milliseconds with milliseconds. So debounce duration, so what do we do here? We check, so this duration we compare with that duration. Let's add a greater or equal here maybe. And then we're gonna say that everything here is gonna be inside this if. And let's not forget to close the if at the end. So now the code is complete and let's go through it one more time. So first in the setup, we initialize the push button. We get the last button state and then we enter the loop, okay. So if enough time has passed, since we have uh, changed the button state, well, we go inside this if, we read the button state again, we compare it with the last one, okay? If it is equal, we just go out and we continue and we continue. If it is not equal, okay, we know the state has changed. And in this case, we do two things. We update the last time and we update the last state, okay? Then we can do an action. So here the action is just to check if it is released and then print something. We're gonna come back to the beginning of loop and because this is going very fast, here the last time button state changed is gonna be very close to the current time. So this is gonna be lower than the debounce duration. So we're not gonna enter the if. So we're gonna continue to go through the loop and after 50 milliseconds here have passed, this duration is gonna be greater than the debounce duration and then we can read the button state again. So of course, what you can do is to increase or decrease this, okay? Depends on if you still get some bounces, you may increase it and you may try to decrease it until you get bounces again and try to find a good value, okay? Where it's not too high, so you don't wait too long, but it's not too low and you don't have any risk of getting bounces in your code. And now with this, well, let's try the code. You can upload the code check if it's compiling, okay, uploading, and then open the serial monitor again. And if I press and release on the push button a few times, well, we can see that uh, we have just once every time. Button has been released once, but not twice. And so this is how you're gonna fix the bounce problem. So once you understand it once, well, that's very easy to implement it in every project you do. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Arduino step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.